Hello grade 10s, welcome back to another video with me Miss Martins. As you can see, we'll be doing some trig 2D for grade 10 math with a special focus on angle of elevation and angle of depression. Let's jump right into the video. But don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. Before we go on to trig 2D, 2D trigonometry, angle of elevation and depression, I need to make sure that you are reminded of your different trig ratios. So we've got sin or sine, doesn't matter how you say it, cos and tan. You need to remember, I, this is how I remember it, so, ka, toa. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, as I've written over here. Then we've got Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse and tan is opposite over adjacent. Remember when we're speaking about things like opposite, adjacent and hypotenuse, we are speaking about the different lengths of the triangle relative to the angle that we're talking about. So let's look at sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. In this question, I'm asking you for sine or sin of theta. That's my angle. So what you need to do is you need to go look for your angle, which in this case is over here. And you need to ask yourself, what side or what length of the triangle is opposite my angle? Opposite is 12. And what is the hypotenuse of the triangle? Remember the hypotenuse is always the longer side. It's opposite the 90 degree angle. So opposite the 90 degree is 13. So in this case, sin or sine of theta is opposite 12 over hypotenuse 13. If you look at cos, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, here's my angle once more. Remember, 12 is opposite. 13 is the hypotenuse. Adjacent means next to. So this is the adjacent side. 5 over your hypotenuse, which is 13. I know some of my students say to me, but ma'am, 13 is also next to, it's also adjacent to my angle. Yes, it is. It's also next to, but 13, this length over here, this one over here is special. It's the hypotenuse of the triangle. Okay. So the adjacent side is this one over here. Tan is opposite. So what is opposite is 12 and adjacent, as we said, is five. You need to know your trig ratios. Otherwise, Doing trig 2D problems is going to be very, very difficult. Now, what do we mean by angle of elevation and depression? Because we're going to integrate this into our trig 2D problems. You need to understand the word elevate and depress. So if I say elevate, I want to elevate you, or I want you to take an elevator, we're going up. To elevate is to go up depression, depress, go down. Okay, that's the difference. So what do we mean by angle of elevation? Well, the angle of elevation is the angle between the line of sight, so where you are looking, and the horizontal. Okay, but it's above the horizontal, between that horizontal and the line of sight. So if you look at this picture over here, you can see that there's my line of sight. I'm looking at an object up here. Imagine that's you. Technically, you would be tilted a little bit. There we go. You're looking. There's your line of sight. You're looking at the star up there. And so it's that angle between the line of sight and the horizontal. And it's called angle of elevation because elevation is up. So it's like this, from the horizontal up to your line of sight. That would be your angle of elevation. Here's another image to illustrate the concept. Here's your line of sight. So you're over here as an observer. You're looking at the object over here at A. And here's your horizontal. It's that over there. One more illustration to maybe help you. Here's your line of sight. That's exactly the same as the previous one, your horizontal angle of elevation. And I've got one of the Eiffel Tower and this person over here. There's their line of sight. They're looking at their person standing at the top of the Eiffel Tower. So it is that angle from the horizontal, which is a line that is like the x-axis. It's flat like that, okay? Horizontal, like the horizon. So it's the angle from that horizontal position up to the line of sight. Here is the definition technically for angle of elevation. You do not need to know the definition, just need to understand it. 
then the angle of depression that is kind of the opposite so the angle of depression is it's the angle from the line of sight so you're looking down let's say you're looking down at someone over here and here's the horizontal so it's going down like that it's that angle of depression here's an example the same person people are standing here but in this from this person's perspective this person's line of sight is going like this they're looking down at their friend at the bottom here's the horizontal the angle of depression is going down so here's a question that we can try together i stand 10 meters away from the base of a cliff so this is me here's my eyes i stand 10 meters away from the base of a cliff so imagine here's the cliff there's the cliff side. I stand 10 meters away. So this distance from the base of the cliff to me is 10 meters. The angle of elevation from the base of the cliff. This is basically your horizontal over here. The base of the cliff is your horizontal to the top of the cliff. So that angle over here, which is this one over here, they say is 30 degrees. And they want us to calculate the height of the cliff. So they're looking for H. Now, we approach this like we would any trig problem. We have a 90 degree triangle. You need to assume that the horizontal and the cliff are 90 degrees. If they don't give you the 90, we do have to assume for elevation and depression that this angle over here is 90 or we won't be able to do our trig in grade 10. So we've got the base of the cliff, ship, we've got this length is 10, we've got this angle is 30. Essentially, we're working with a triangle that looks like this. The 90 height, 10 and 30. What I want you to do is I want you to find H, okay? So what you need to do is the following. You need to figure out which trig ratio to use in order to get H. So this is how you do it. Here's your angle. Consider what you want and what you have. So relative to the 30, look at the 30. So start from the 30. What do you have? You don't have the hypotenuse. Remember the hypotenuse is opposite the 90. We don't have that. We don't have the hypotenuse. So here's a big thing. Very, very important. If we don't have the hypotenuse, we can't use sin. Because remember, sin is opposite over hypotenuse. And we can't use cos because cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're probably going to need to use tan. Let's see if we need to use tan. What do I have? I have the adjacent side. I have 10, which is adjacent to 30. So I have the adjacent side. And I want H, which is opposite. I want the opposite side. Okay. So I have the adjacent. I want the opposite. Opposite and adjacent. What trig ratio does that sound like? Tan. So what you're going to do, remember it's always tan. When you write your trig ratio, it's tan of the angle. So it's tan of 30 is equal to what is opposite 30? H. What is adjacent to 30? 10. And how do you solve for this? Remember, this on this side, it means divide. So when you take the 10 over, it's going to be multiply. So 10 tan 30 equals H. Type it in on your calculator and we get 5,77 meters. That's the height of the cliff. 5,77 meters. Easy. Let's do another one together. I want you to try this one and then unpause the screen and try with me. So we've got Miss Martins, that's me, flies a kite on a 17 meter string at an inclination of 63. Now they're not using the word elevation, they're using inclination. But when you read the word inclination, I want you to think of incline, like a slope. So inclination, elevation, same thing. They want to know what is the height of the kite above the ground. And then they want to know if Miss Martin's student stands directly below the kite. Calculate the distance between the two people. Okay, so they want two different things. Let's work out a first. If they give you something like this, you need to draw yourself a picture. So first things first, I drew in the string of my kite. There's my kite. And remember that string is 17 meters long. So this over here is me, 
and I am looking up at my kite and they say it's at an inclination of 63. So when they say that you have to assume that it's from the ground or the horizontal. So this angle over here is 63 degrees. They want to know what is the height of the kite above the ground. So we want to know how high is this? What is the height over here? So look at what you have, look at what you need. Here's the 63, that's your angle. What do you have? This would have to be a 90 degree angle because if we're talking about the ground, which is the horizontal and the height above the ground, that would form a 90 degree angle. So if you take a look at what you have and what you need, here's what I have, the 63. What do I have? I have the hypotenuse of the triangle. Here's the 90. Opposite the 90, I have the hypotenuse. I need, look at the 63, I need the height, which is opposite the 63. So I have the hypotenuse. I'm looking for the opposite. So opposite and hypotenuse, what trig ratio is that? That would be sin or sine. So sin of my angle, sin of 63, is equal to opposite. What is opposite? H. What is the hypotenuse? 17. Now, how do you solve for that? It's divide by 17 on this side, take it over, it becomes 17 sin 63, that's equal to H. So when I type that in, I get 15,14711. If I round it off to two decimals, I get 15,15 meters. Now, remember the next question said, if Miss Martin's students, remember this is me, Miss M, if my student stands directly below the kite, so this is where my student is standing, calculate the distance between the two people. So here's my student directly below the kite. Here's me over here. They want this distance over here. So now you have to reconsider what you have and what you need. There's different ways to do this. If you take a look at this triangle, it is a right angle triangle. We know that the hypotenuse is 17. We just found out that this is 15,15. Yes, you could do Pythagoras to get D, but I want us to practice using trigonometry. Also, because this uses a rounded off answer, when you do Pythagoras, if you use the rounded off answer, you'll get maybe a slightly different answer to what I get now when I do trigonometry. I'm going to use trigonometry and if I were to do this in the exam and what I would say to my students is my best advice is if these questions were in the exam together you calculated A. In the exam you don't know if 15,15 is correct. For all you know you could have made a mistake. Yes you get CA marks for the next question but I would focus on trying to find D by using again the 63 and the 17 if possible let's see if i can do that so i'm looking for d i have 63 and i have 17 so again i have the hypotenuse of the triangle i am looking for adjacent okay i'm looking for d which is adjacent and i have the 63 so adjacent and hypotenuse that is cos. So let's say cos of the angle, cos of 63, is equal to adjacent. What is adjacent? It's D over hypotenuse, which is 17. So I'm going to now say 17 multiplied by cos 63, and I get D as 7,72 meters. In the very next video, I'm going to do a more interesting looking example, more past paper practice. Let's go. I'll see you in the next video.